Good evening, everyone. My name is Heath Haskins, and this is my Draw My Life. Five thousand. No, wait, six. Um, five thousand, six thousand, something special. Thank you guys so much. Here's my life story, and I will try not to tell you my whole life story. I was born in the U.S. in a small town called. No, wait. I'm not supposed to give that up. Okay, uh, just somewhere. Anyhow, I am my mom's only son and my dad's second son. I have a half brother. We didn't grow up together. My dad is an upholsterer, restoring furniture and car seats, and my mom was a teacher. She majored in history and taught middle school students. Growing up, I had a lot of energy and very quick to pick up on things and mimic what I saw around me. I was rolling over, sitting up, crawling long before I was supposed to be. I was swimming on my own by the age of two, and I loved being in the water. My mom took me roller skating when I was three, against everyone telling her not to, and I took to it like nothing. Needless to say, all these smarts didn't give me much room for common sense. I would bash my head on the coffee table because I'd jump off the back of the couch pretending to be Superman or Spider-Man more than once. Never seriously hurt, though. When I was three and a half, my dad had bought this thing called a ColecoVision. It had an Atari adapter so my brother and him could play both Coleco and Atari. I tried to play it for the most part and did a great job at smashing the buttons and wiggling the little sticks just like I saw them do. I was awesome at it. My family never had much money growing up. Most of it went to bills, payments, food. My grandma was the first to buy me this thing called a Nintendo Entertainment System. It came with one controller and one game, Super Mario Bros. I was hooked. By this time, my brother was no longer living with us. Different story. And I was now an only child. My mother would let me get new games at least once a month instead of any kind of allowance. I was soon subscribed to Nintendo Power Magazine and I knew all the tricks about the games I had, and some games I didn't have. I would trade cartridges with the kids at school and I would take my NES with me whenever I had a sleepover. I remember the first time that I saw a commercial for the Game Genie and I was amazed. Infinite lives? Power-ups? Any game? Needless to say, I got one, and by the time I was done messing around with it, I was reading the manual and I was able to make my own codes, like plus one life whenever I died, or moon jump, which was a really high jump. This was my first programming and I didn't even know it. I had made friends around the neighborhood, and one of my best friends was Aaron. He and I would have sleepovers and game constantly. We also got a hold of my dad's camcorder, or a video camera, and we had made these little movies, like stop motion animations and filming our Nintendo games. At the time, we had Super Nintendo Entertainment Systems and had started quite a collection of games between the both of us. Our favorites were two-player adventure games. Well, my family eventually moved, but only about seven miles away from the original home. In fact, I started to hang out with them more because I now had a pool, a jacuzzi, a sauna room, a pool table, and an entire basement where we could have sleepovers. It had a wet bar with no alcohol, dartboard, fireplace. I could go on, but you get the point. One day, one of my teachers had asked us to make an essay over something, and I did my usual thing of handwriting out clean as I could, making a draft after draft, revisions, and all the work that comes with it. I ended up getting a C- in the essay. My mother knew the time and the research that went into that essay, and she confronted the teacher about it. And the teacher responded, it's not typed. My mother went mother hen on her. After giving her and the principal a good yelling, we went straight to Best Buy, where my mom proceeded to max out another credit card and buy me a PC. I don't know if everyone has this but when you first open the box i imagine this image of me sitting in a dark basement with just the glow of the screen on my face unlocking bank accounts and taking over companies the life of a hacker that moment soon passed because i realized i had no clue what i was doing it didn't take long for me to realize that my computer didn't look the same as other people's computers acer aspire had it on its own custom desktop 
and it laid over the top of the Windows 95 desktop that was normally on computers. Well, we didn't have Google, and so I asked Jeeves, or I go for it or something. And then, when that didn't work, local libraries were the best. I was in band, and I could play by ear, and I could figure out pretty much any song. I was in triple jump and track, long legs. I played center in football. I played t-ball, coach pitch, baseball, forgot that part. Was a cub scout, tiger cubs, boy scouts, taekwondo, gymnastics. I rode motorcycles, and yes, I was, was and yes, in general, I was very athletic, musical, and smart. I never really fit into any kind of clique, and the cliques never really rejected me. There wasn't an occasional hater, but for the most part, my school was small enough that everyone just kind of hung out with me. By the end of my freshman year, something was wrong. My grades were down, and I felt sick trying to go to school, knowing that I had not brought home the books that I needed to do the homework assignments. My mother had me evaluated by the counselors to see if there was something going on, and they suggested that I take an IQ test, and then something called a Cranes test. The questions seemed really simple, and some of them were just fun, like how many lines can you draw from tip to tip with these greater than or less than symbols. She would read off a series of numbers, and then I would read them back, and then she'd do it again, and I'd have to repeat them backwards. Problem solving, 3D shapes, all kinds of neat stuff. When it was over, my mother was brought in, and the counselor read off the test results, reading below average. Writing below average. Mathematics unmeasurable. Wait, wh what does that mean? My mom asked. The counselor grinned a little and said we couldn't measure it. It was too high for our scale. She continued. 3D relational objects unmeasurable. Problem solving unmeasurable. Dexterity unmeasurable. It continued like this until she got to speech average. She proceeded to read more jargon from another paper, and I heard the keywords, found that his IQ is approximately 138. I asked if that was good, and she said yes, it was two points away from genius. Because of the huge gaps in between the scales and the amount of energy that I would show during our testing sessions, she stated that I should be evaluated for ADHD. My mother broke down into tears in that office that night. She was a teacher, trained to identify these kinds of signs and behaviors but it somehow missed her own son. Well, I got some medication from the doctor called Adderall, a new kind of med for treating ADHD and to help calm the hyperness. My first time taking it, whoa, it was like everything tunnel visioned into what I was doing at that particular point in time. I had great concentration. I could finish homework on time. On the outside, I looked calm and collected, but in my head, I was building, measuring, crafting, calculating, all at the same time without restrictions. I told my mom, what is this feeling? She told me, this is what normal is. The meds would wear off after about seven hours and I would crash, like falling off of a sugar rush, which by the way, I do not get. I found that coffee kind of had the same effect, but far less impacting as the meds did. With my newfound superpowers, uh, that's what I called it, I started programming. My first programming language was Visual Basic. I was 14, and I made this thing called a PROG, short for programs. AOL was a simple program to manipulate, and with Windows 95 98 API, it was easy to master. My grades picked up, I started going to college slash high school classes, and by the time I was 16, I knew Visual Basic, C++, HTML, and COBOL. Not to mention all the other little script languages like batches and commands. After graduation, I really hadn't had any plans. I mean, I wanted to go to college, but I had no money. I had a job, but it really wasn't paying anything. And I didn't make the cut for any kind of scholarships. About four months later, one of my friends was over at my house and he asked, Hey, I have to go sign some last minute paperwork, so do you want to go with me? Sure, why not? Could be fun. Well, I ended up sitting in front of Staff Sergeant, and he convinced me that the Marines were right for me. I could go to college, I could become a programmer, I could see the world, and all for free. Sweet. And he would put me into the buddy program, so me and my friend could go through boot camp together. 
Awesome. I told my mom she was very upset, but I must have been the easiest recruit he ever had because I went in on Tuesday, I signed up on Wednesday, I went to MEPS on Thursday, and I shipped out the following week. Boot camp changed me, for good or bad, I don't know. But it helped me focus on the ADHD in new ways that I had never imagined. The word brainwashed, it's so powerful. I would consider more of a overhaul of already good traits, honor, integrity at the top. At the end of boot camp, I found that they had closed the G4 category, programming engineer, and they had placed me as an MP, military police. Ah, uh, that sucks. After a short leave home, I was off to Lackland Air Force Base, Texas to become a Naval Correctional Specialist, which is not an MP that I was thinking. I was to become a jailer. Wait, what? After training, we were to pick three places that we wanted to go. I picked the bases that were closest to my home. Wish granted, off to Okinawa, Japan, opposite side of the world. Marines have jokes, you know. Needless to say, I was really good at my job. I loved the food, sushi, and I got to experience one of the most humble human races ever known, the Okinawans. I liked it so much I extended for another year. They seemed to think that I must have been really good at the rifle because I would get expert every time that I went to the rifle range. I ended up picking up a second MOS for a job as a PMI, Primary Marksman Instructor. I got to teach other Marines in classes of 16 to 36 on how to shoot the M16A2 service rifle and the M9 Beretta service pistol. 9-11 had taken place during this time and the Marines had started to begin this thing called stop loss meaning they could not transfer to the bases or exit out of contracts, finishing their tours. The travel cutoff date was October 25th. My plane left the island October 24th. I was finally back in the States in California, surfing, skating, hanging out with my new roommate who also skated and gamed besties, smiley. One day we were out at the movies and right after we needed to go get our hair cut. We arrived at the barber just as the lady was stepping out, locking up. Sorry, we're closed, she told my roommate. And then I stepped out of the car and she said, but I have tools back at my place and my roommates had just bought a new pool table. Sweet, we got our haircuts, but the pool table hadn't arrived. My roommate left and headed back to base and I ended up hanging out with her until about 4.30 in the morning. We had physical training the next day that was at five. We kissed in the parking lot after she had dropped me off. I went inside, changed, and went off to physical training. So tired. The next day after work, we all went out to the mall and I told her that I couldn't kiss her anymore. I had a girlfriend back home and I laid it all out. She was heartbroken, but still wanted to hang out with me. It was nice. I had some leave, so I went home and hung out with my mom. By this time, my parents had gotten divorced and my mom was living on her own. We were best friends by this point. We went out dancing and drinking and partying. I would be her DD and she would be mine. We took turns. Like I said, we had a blast. The time came that I needed to go back home and while we were in the terminal, I kissed and hugged my mom and I said, six more months, mom, I'm coming home. I landed in Cali and I finally got back to post. And while I was on shift, I had been back for about a day and a half. One of the Lance Corporals came to relieve me and instructed me to report to the duty sergeant. When I walked in, he was very solemn and he had me shut the door behind me. He stated that he had just received a phone call, apologized about not being my regular section leader. Then he told me something that rings in my head and it will not ever leave. Your mother passed away tonight. I was in shock, anger, frustration, every emotion became me, but only on the inside. I just sat there. The sergeant had a fellow Marine go with me back to the barracks so I could pack some things and get some sleep. I think they thought I was going to hurt myself. I had been through the same training. I knew why he had to stay.
The flight and the funeral and everything was a blur. I can't recall any of it. But I do remember that I got back, I was sitting on my balcony, and I was crying, and I was giving up. I was attempting to get to Brick Breaker, one of the games on my phone, and ended up landing on Contacts. That Barbara's number, in that digital text and green backlight, I hadn't called her. She didn't know. Ring. Hello? I apologized and explained everything to her. Long story short, we hung out for a few weeks after. She ended up calling me an idiot because of my current girlfriend, and we started dating. I know, this is really long, so I'll speed it up and skip the little details. Just know that I love my family and I enjoy them every day. Got out of the Marines, came back home with the girl, bought a house together, got married, got a job with the jail, had my daughter Hope, went to school to get a degree that says I know something about computers, which I already knew, didn't get the job that I wanted, had Oliver, got that same job that I had wanted before, continued through school, got a second degree, worked as help desk, and now I'm their developer. And now I'm 34, working IT as a developer, and performing IT ninja hackery feats of awesomeness every day. I have two extremely bright children who always play my player two and player three. I have a beautiful, lovely wife who cares for me and our children and supports everything that we do. And I finally get to play video games every day. So yeah, I'm not your typical my life is YouTube kind of person, but I still have that dream of getting to play video games as a living. Although making them wouldn't be far-fetched either. Thank you guys for helping make me into a YouTuber. I was just trying to make clean gameplays for my kids, and well, I guess others were looking for that too. I love you guys. Thank you so much.